after some payments are made, we will our outstanding balance have changed from the initial amount of loan. So as we pay off our loan little bit by little bit, of course our outstanding balance change. There are two ways to evaluate our outstanding balance at different time. Okay, first is the retrospective method and the second is the prospective method. So retrospective method, you will look from the back. Okay, so you are now at time 2, let's say. So you want to find outstanding balance at time 2. So to evaluate outstanding balance, you go from the back. So you, you see what have been paid so far. For prospective method, you are finding OB2, you will look fr uh, from the front. What is not, what haven't been paid yet? What haven't paid yet? This one? Okay. So, retrospective method, prospective method. Both ways, you will get the same answer. So, this is retrospective method. This is from our previous example. The loan is 709 and we already paid um, one payment. So now we want to find balance at time 1, B1. Balance right after the first payment is made. So using retrospective method, we do it as follows. The original principal, um, outstanding balance is original principal minus all principals paid up to time T. So in this case, T is one. Okay, if we if we actually follow this um equation, so this is the calculation that we will get the loan and accumulated to time one. So this is accumulated to time one minus all payments received before and until time t. So up to time one, we only received one payment, which is at time one. So this is the payment, 200, and the value of this 200 at time 1 is also 200, so we don't need to do anything about it. So, by doing this, this is the pros uh, retrospective method. So, we got the balance at time 1 is 544.65. This is another way to check um, if our calculation is correct or not. This is by using this relationship. Um, B T equals to B B T minus one minus P T right so B T minus one in this case is seven oh nine point one nine minus P T P T is this is P T R T minus uh, B0 times I. So, RT minus IT is equals to PT. So, the balance minus PT, you'll get the new balance B, BT. So, this is a method for you to check. And this is a prospective method. Okay. So just to recap, this is the formula for the retrospective method. Okay. Moving on, prospective method. So prospective method, we will use, we will look at the future. So we want to find B1 right now. So we look at what it will what will be paid after the first payment. So we consider all the payments that will be paid after the first payment. So uh, outstanding balance at time 1 is equals to RT R R and then um, the present value of all R's so it's uh, okay so basically for prospective method we will just consider the present value of all the remaining payments so in this case, the remaining payments will be these three level payments. So because it's level payment, the formula will be as follows. So if the period involves varying interest rate or, var or varying um, 
payments, not level payments, then you have to uh, allow for it accordingly. Lah. Uh, either way, no, uh, either way, you still going to find the present value of all payments after time t. Okay. Okay, now let's make sense of the convenient formula used for IT and PT just now. If you remember, there is a convenient formula to calculate the proportion, the proportion for the payment that will go to IT and the proportion of the payment that will go to PT. Right. How do we get that convenient formula? Okay, if we use the retrospective method sorry if we use the prospective method okay this is the uh, calculation of our bt minus 1 so bt minus 1 is equals to all the number of the remaining payments after t minus 1 so, the remaining payments after the minus 1 is n, n minus t minus 1 lah. Okay, so that is prospective method, right? Okay, so, so we know it is equals to bt minus 1 times i. So, bt minus 1 just now, we know it equals to this. So, I put the bt minus 1 inside here directly so now i got i t i t is equals to this so this is the convenient formula that we come up with earlier so this is the one that i highlight in yellow just now okay so this is simply 1 minus v to the power of to v to the power of how many remaining payments at the beginning of the the period that we want to find our it so at the beginning not right at the time rt but at the beginning of that period So this is just a, a recap. Okay, so I think you just have a look. So, so this is the convenient formula for uh, in interest content of IT, and then this is the capital repeat PT. This is the uh, proportion, and then outstanding balance, outstanding after payment. It will be. Um, yeah, how many payments left after the after the first payment? Let's say this one is our first payment. After the first payment, how many payments left? So n minus one. Okay. This is a numerical example. Okay, so this is just a recap. This is um considering if the r is one. So just to recap. For the first one, it is basically 1 minus um, V and this N is basically the remaining payments after the beginning of this period. So the beginning of uh, period 1, the beginning is time 0, right? So how many payments left after, after time 0? So it's 5. So 1 minus V to the power of N. Sorry, not 5. In this case, it's n. So, this one, n minus 1. Da, 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 da. Accordingly. So, capital repeat is just 1 min. The portion is just 1 minus the portion for IT. And then for loan, it's the outstanding. Basically, this is using the prospective method. So, using prospective method, you will see how many payments remaining after time t. So, for example, for the first one, 
how many payments more remaining after first payment so it's n minus 1 how many payments remaining after this two payments so n minus 2 etc so this is example using numbers so this is a loan a loan of um, 4,329 4, and then with five level payments of a thousand so I1 is simply yeah use the same formula if you compare this table with the other table here this one you see the number matches exactly it's just that we are using different ways to calculate these numbers this one we are using uh, information from adjacent adjacent um a year so for when we calculate this one we we are depending on the numbers from time zero when we are calculating two we are depending on the information from time one and so on this one the formula is slightly different but at the end of the day the answer that you get is exactly the same and you have to understand both relationship okay up to now we are we, we have been discussing on um, annual annual loans but there are also loans that is paid monthly so for example your house loan you pay monthly right your house loan your car loan etc so for the monthly loan with monthly installment um, the schedule is exactly it, it's very similar but just the unit period is different so it's good to derive the uh, to derive the amortization schedule for monthly installment you just derive the effective the effective um interest rate g for the payment for the payment period okay